Thanks everybody for your time. Um, Avation is an aircraft leasing company. For those, uh, I see some familiar faces in the audience. Um, for those who have heard the story before, hopefully it'll be worth listening because we're going through a very exciting growth period between now and Christmas. For those who haven't heard the story before, aircraft leasing is quite simply owning commercial passenger aircraft, leasing them to airlines. What most people don't appreciate about our business is that uh, there are about 25,000 commercial passenger aircraft on the planet and half of them are owned by leasing companies like us. Um, and so it's a very well established, very lucrative business. Uh, we've been around for about 11 years. Um, the easiest way to understand aircraft leasing is by using the analogy of that um, owning an aircraft is, or investing in an aircraft is a lot like investing in property, how people invest in flats to let. So we will go and choose an aircraft buy and buy that aircraft. We will use bank debt um, to, to buy, to typically to purchase that aircraft. And then we find a, a, a tenant, a, less, a lessee, an, air, an airline, and we'll sign a very long lease with them. So where the analogy breaks down is that um, typically in aircraft leasing, you'll sign a lease on an aircraft for 10 to 12 years uh, with the one customer, the airline. Um, and where the other, uh, the other um, place the analogy break down, breaks down is that the asset will generate, um, and we're currently generating over 12% yield per year on the value of the asset. So quite simply, if you own this asset and you lease it for 10 years, typically you're going to generate about 120% of what you purchased the asset for. Now, aircraft have a uh, a lifespan of about 25 years. So these aircraft will pay themselves off inside the first lease and then generate a lot of, um, you know, a lot of extra profit and cash flow um, for the rest of their lives. So they're profitable all along the way. Um, and we've, as I said, been around for 11 years. Um, the share price history of this company is, in 11 years is from 4p. I think it closed today at £2.24. And if you're going to buy this stock or, or considering buying this stock, you'll be buying this stock primarily because it's a growth story. Um, we um, have a history of growth, typically cumulative annual growth rate of 30% per year. That's three zero. Um, and we, but we do pay a dividend, so it's a 2% it's a yielding stock. Um, in what, Avation is listed on the um, um, main board of the um, London Stock Exchange. Um, we're based and headquartered in Singapore. We have no other headquarters anywhere else. We have 20 employees. They're all, they all, they're all based in, well, apart from one, is based in Singapore. We've just employed a guy who's a sales guy who's um, based in Dublin. Uh, everything that we do is in US dollars, so we don't have, uh, we don't have much exposure to foreign exchange risks. Uh, these numbers that I'm talking about today um, will be as of Christmas uh, because we've got a very busy period in the next four weeks where we're delivering, um, f um, well, we actually advised that we delivered a new plane into the fleet last Friday and we've got another four planes to deliver effectively before the, um, before the new year. Um, and that'll represent, in that five-week period, about 30% growth... <laughs> from our 30 June financial year end. And this is a company that on average for the last five years has grown at 30%. So we'll have delivered financial year 18 growth um, before the end of the half year effectively. So it is a very exciting period. And if you look over the 11 year history of this company, the share price has followed um, the total assets of the company because the total assets are just the aircraft that we own. All of those assets on average generate a 12% yield. So obviously revenue follows um, and profits have been increasing, uh, increasing accordingly. So we will have a portfolio of 37 very popular aircraft. Those are photos of our aircraft there. Um, and that will include uh, two new additions to the fleet, which are wide body aircraft, which will be a brand new Boeing 777-300ER on lease to Philippine Airlines and a Airbus A330, which is on lease for another 10 years to Eva Air, which is a, no, Taiwan's number one airline and one of the top 10 airlines on the planet. 
Uh, we'll also have 16 narrow body um, jets. That's the sort of uh, typically your Airbus A320, Boeing 737, you know, the easy, easy jet and the Ryanair type um, aircraft. And we also do, and we made a name for ourselves about um, six years ago in global leasing by leasing to airlines around the world the propeller plane there, which is a 72 seat turboprop aircraft called an ATR 72. Now, we made a name for ourselves uh, in that particular aircraft because that aircraft's been manufactured for 25 years. It's operated by 200 different airlines in the world in 100 different countries. So we use that particular aircraft to springboard our current day business because every airline that, the, you know, all the big airlines that use those turboprops use the um, narrow body jets and then of course the best airlines in the world typically use the biggest <coughs> jets that we're just moving into now. Um, we look at our um, portfolio of aircraft um, uh, just like you do as a fund manager uh, in that they're a portfolio of yield producing assets and we look at them in terms of um, uh, in terms of risk and in terms of health by what the average age of the fleet is which for us is three years which is one of the youngest fleets in the world and then of course you've got the revenue that is attached to those aircraft through the lease signed leases and they, on average, across all 37 aircraft, will have 7.7 .7 years to run. So to put that into perspective, we will have, by Christmas, over a billion dollars in assets, generating 12, over 12% 12 a year, so that's $120 million a year revenue, which is locked in for 7.7 .7 years. So we don't have to do anything else. We'll collect $120 million a year. Now, in the year just gone to 30 June, we reported $94 million revenue. So it gives you an indication of the growth that's going to be delivered in financial year 2018. Uh, we've added a couple of new uh, airlines to the list and we've got a record number of customers, diverse, because there are two, the two risks in our business are quite simple in that um, if you're renting a plane to an airline, uh, if that airline has a problem, it stops paying the rent. So you need to be, um, so you need to look at the credit risk. The way to deal with that credit risk is to have lots of different customers and to have the most popular aircraft in the world so that if you have a problem with one particular airline, you can move that, take your plane, move it to another airline and continue to collect rent. And we have done that in the past month because we had a plane with, um, if, if any of you have read the news, we had a plane with Air Berlin. And we have already successfully moved that plane to EasyJet. <coughs> so by having a very popular aircraft that's in high demand, we've been able to put that asset to work immediately. And that's one of the, that's, so that mitigates one of the key risks. The other risk is the residual value of the assets. Now, we pay all our assets off in about 10 or 12 years. So the residual value uh, risk um, in that they pay themselves back is quite low. Obviously, after that, you've then got potential for um, a book loss. But history shows of our 11-year operating history <coughs> that we typically make gains on sales of aircraft. We made $5 million in gains on the sale of aircraft in the last financial year. So you mitigate the risk by choosing good and varied customers, by choosing the most popular aircraft. <coughs> and we also um, like to mitigate risk by, uh, through our business model, which is we only really like to deal in very young or brand new aircraft with very long leases. Because we feel that's the least risky end of the spectrum for us to deal in. And that's generated fantastic returns for our shareholders. And on average, as I said, this company doubles in size every two and a half years. And if you look at our share price, you'll see our share price effectively following that, that trend over the last 11 years or so. Um, we're based on the stock exchange here. We've got a B plus rating by S&P and Fitch. We've got good access to both debt and capital markets. Um, we've got uh, a very strong management with lots of um, history now. And we can do everything that we need to do in this industry. So we can buy and sell um, brand new planes, we can buy and sell second hand planes, we can part out planes, repossess planes, transition them between airlines. These are all things that keep our portfolio young, lower risk and generating optimum returns. <coughs> so we do see ourselves as fund managers and bespoke investors. You have to remember that in our industry, you know, we have a billion dollars of assets and we're considered a small player. And that's because every year, Boeing and Airbus manufacture 2,000 brand new planes a year. Remember, we've got 37. That's every year another 2,000 brand new planes are manufactured. And there's probably another five or 600 second-hand planes 
that are traded between leasing companies. <clears throat> so out of those two and a half plus thousand opportunities, we're looking only to invest in between you know, five to ten aircraft per year. So we are very bespoke. We have a very conservative um, uh, set of risk criteria and investment criteria. <coughs> so these are the numbers released for the, on the 7th of September for the financial year 2017. So we're almost halfway through 18. Our revenues were up 32%. Uh, to 94 million, which was a record. Uh, operating profit at a record again, up 32%. Total profit after tax, $21 million. That's after tax. So you think about the margin, $21 million over 94 million revenue. Very high after tax margin. This is an extremely profitable company. Um, we generated operating cash flow of $63 million. Um, we had total assets of 900 million. That'll be well over a billion dollars by Christmas. Um, and we generate a record earnings per share of 36 cents, which is up 6%. So just a bit about the history of the company, we, the, we, which we've separated into three um, areas. The first sort of five years, we, were, we operated in Australia exclusively. We, we serviced only one regional airline. So we were very small, um, very focused, um, very concentrated. And so uh, probably a very speculative investment at that point in time. About five or six years ago, we got involved with those turboprop um, aircraft. Uh, we sold a dozen of those to Virgin Australia, um, and we started selling those planes around the world. And we made a very good name for ourselves by doing that. Um, in from f financial year 12 to 17 is when we um, started really impacting the, the global markets, and we became a leader in the, the in the um, uh, leasing of that turboprop aircraft to airlines and built our reputation. So we grew our total asset base in those five years from 160 million by six times to over 900 million dollars in, in uh, roughly a space of about five years. Um, we got to a total um, airline customers of 10 um, and we um, being based in Singapore we're part of the aircraft leasing scheme which is a taxation scheme run by the Singaporean government which enables us to pay only 10% corporate tax rate and get a withholding tax exemption, <coughs> which is why we like operating from Singapore. Um, the Singaporean government has announced that corporate tax rate in 2019 for us is dropping to 8%. So we get to keep and distribute to our shareholders a majority of the profits that we make. 2018 beyond, as I said, a particularly exciting time in the next sort of four weeks. Um, the, um, there's only two things, you, if, you, if you've never heard of this before and, you, and you're thinking about you know, what drives this industry, what do I need, how do I need to get a feel for whether this is a good investment? I think there's only two things that you need to focus on and understand. One is Boeing and Airbus um, uh, represent over 95% percent production of aircraft every year. So it's an effective duopoly. Um, they've, it's been like that for a very long period of time. They're increasing production rates of aircraft at about five or six percent a year. And if you want to buy a brand new aircraft, you have to wait five or six <coughs> years for it to be delivered. On the other hand is the demand for aircraft, which is simply by how much each year is, uh, pass is passenger traffic growing. Now this year, currently, up until this period of time, this year is about 7.5%. So demand for aircraft is outpacing the supply of aircraft. And while that continues to occur, aircraft prices will remain high and lease rates will remain high. And lessors like us have a, an advantage in dealing with the airlines and being able to push those prices to, to, the, to the airlines. And you've got to remember that Revenue, the passenger traffic has been growing at global, double global GDP for longer than I've been alive. And I'm older than I look. <laughs> and, and that's simply a function, of, and you all know this anecdotally, they've commoditised air travel. They've turned planes into buses, cheapened the fares, filled these planes up, um, put bums on seats, and you can fly anywhere around the world very cheaply. And while airlines fill the planes and do that, they make lots of profits and they've been having record after record year for the last five years. So it's a very healthy industry 
There are one or two, obviously, examples such as Air Berlin, but we try to mitigate those risks by diversification, choosing the right assets, and then if we have to, we'll go and get our asset, put it with another airline. So what we're doing is that, as I said, we're delivering a plane a week between now and Christmas, starting with last week. So that's five planes in five weeks. Um, we're adding three new customers to our list, which are Mandarin Airways, which is a subsidiary of China Airways, which is a Chinese flag carrier and one of the biggest airlines in the world. Great customer for us. Um, we're adding Eva Air, which is a top ten airline on the planet. So very low credit risk, you, you would understand. And we're adding Philippine Airlines, which is a flag carrier as well. So as we grow bigger, we are able to deal with bigger and better customers and lower the whole risk profile of the fleet. Um, we um, adding, we'll increase the total customers to, two, to 12. Um, and by diversifying and improving the customers, we're lowering the risk um, overall. Um, I won't spend much time on this slide. This is available in the, in the presentation and the soft copy will be available. But what it basically says is this is our experience over 11 years. You know, we've purchased over 57 aircraft. We've sold 18 of them. I think 17 of those have been at a profit. So we've got a very good operating... We're not Johnny-come-lately to this business. Um, we have um, continually um, lowered the age, the average age of our fleet and continue to increase the lease term. We've lowered our cost of debt. And the great opportunity for you as a sh as if you're going to consider becoming a shareholder of this company is pretty much this. We grow on average, we'll grow our earnings on average historically by 30%. So you're going to get growth in earnings, which is fantastic. But not only that, in addition to that, we're going to become more profitable because we're going to lower the cost of our debt as our credit rating goes up. And the simple way to think about the profitability of our business is that we generate 12.5% yield on the asset and we pay 5% for the cost of our debt, which is a 7.5% net interest margin, which is you know, quadruple what most banks generate as a net interest margin. So we lend money to airlines effectively at 12.5% and that money costs us 5%. So extremely profitable business. And what we've done as we've grown is that we've kept that net interest margin about 7.5% strong. And, we can, and as we will continue to grow and add scale and diversification in the future, we expect to go from B plus to double B rating and eventually to a triple B rating and become investment grade. And the companies that do what we do um, that are investment grade can issue debt at 3.5% or 3%. Now, our current cost of debt is 5%. And we've lowered that by... 2% over the last two or three years. So we're going to continue to lower that cost of debt and that will enable us to compete for even more business and do uh, you know, more aircraft than ever um, out of those 2,500 know, aircraft that are available every year. So uh, historical performance, just quickly, as I said, growing the fleet numbers by 20%, but if you look at the total assets in the bottom right-hand corner, um, you're talking about 29.4% cumulative annual growth rate over a five-year period. And in that five-year period, our share price has quadrupled. And I've just told you that the five planes that we're delivering by Christmas or by New Year is the 30% growth for financial year 2018. So, you know, our expectation, you know, reasonably, is that the share price will follow this. Um, if you're concerned about the airline industry, that's a 50-year history, and despite the financial crises, despite terrorist events, despite health um, scares, what you see is that the global fleet um, effectively doubles every 15 years. An extraordinary growth story over, over 50 years. That's our current... That'll be our fleet of aircraft by, by the new year. So we'll have 19 of the turboprop aircraft, We've got plenty of future um, delivery options for those aircraft, and we do about four or five a year. So we've got six on order and 30 f further options. That's a $20 million asset. So it's over $700 million of potential future growth on a fleet base of 37 that'll be about a billion dollars. So lots of growth in the future. We also have um, the 16 narrowbody aircraft there and the two widebody aircraft, which are basically being delivered in the next two weeks to come up with our 37 
aircraft that are worth over a billion dollars. Um, this is a history of how we've how the fleet's become younger over time as we've bought new aircraft and sold older aircraft. And we've added new 10 and 12 year leases and sold the aircraft that have got short duration left on their leases. So we're buying quality assets and, and improving the profile of our metrics and lowering the risk of our business, in fact. That's a list of customers. A lot of those names there will obviously be familiar to you. You know, Thomas Cook, Flybe and EasyJet here. Obviously, Air France is very well known. Um, we've got about 30% of our business in Europe. We've got about 30% of our business in Asia and 30% of our business in Australia. Now, this was a company that four or five years ago had 80% of its business with one airline in Australia, which was Virgin Australia. So we're effectively diversifying um, and adding new customers, and that's lowering risk, as I said. And certainly, as I said, EasyJet, the latest additions to our customer list, EasyJet, Eva Air, Mandarin Air, Airways and Philippine um, Airlines are probably the best or the lowest risk customers that we've ever added to our book. So, you know, we are more attractive to the airlines in the world because we can do, you know, we can do the bigger aircraft. Um, this is um, uh, another slide that sort of depicts risks. This is the change over two years in the diversification of our revenue streams. As I said, if you have a problem with one airline and they stop paying rent, how much of your revenue is at risk? Well, what we've tried to do is chop up that pie more evenly. What this shows you is obviously the extraordinary change over the last couple of years. But as at uh, the new year or as at Christmas, what you'll need to do on the pie chart on the right is add in a wedge of 12% from the Philippine Airlines, add in a wedge of 9% from Eva Airlines and add in a wedge of 5% from um, Mandarin. So that diversification um, is um, being put into practice. That's a list of our um, customers there. Most of them have either extended um, their original lease on, on their aircraft or bought multiple or, or um, leased multiple aircraft from us. And that's a base, a customer base, which we hope will grow their fleet and continue to do business with us. They're not exclusively our customers. Other lessors deal with them. Um, but, you know, they like to have a range of suppliers, so we are growing that number impressively. That's a list of uh, the senior management of the company, the board at the top. The two on the left are executive directors. Uh, Jeff is the founder uh, of the company, been around for 11 years. Rod used to work for Airbus for 25 years, so he knows every airline in the world. He sold the Airbus A320, so we've got good access to customers. The two other uh, directors there are, are non-executive. It's important to know um, with this company, and not too many companies sort of explain this, is that the board and senior management, including myself, um, own over 20% of the shares of this company. So we're fully invested. You know, we, our strongest desire and our strongest motivation is to see this share price grow, which is why we're growing the company, de-risking it, increasing the profits, increasing the dividend this year by 85% alone. This year, increased the dividend by 85%. So this is a growth company that grows at 30% per year, but still managed to increase its dividend. The dividend yield is 2%, so it's not an extraordinarily high yield. But how many, you know, there's not too many companies that are growing at 30% per year that are paying you a dividend. Because we obviously, our choice could be to, instead of paying a dividend, invest in more aircraft to grow the fleet faster. But we recognise shareholder needs and the, our share price has responded through that increase in dividend as well. So we do take the investors' needs very, very seriously because we're investors ourselves. So just a quick snapshot before I finish. Um, in the last minute or so before questions, uh, by Chris, by New Year's we'll be with 37 aircraft. They'll be with 12 different um, airlines operating in nine different countries. The split between wide body, narrow body and Regional aircraft is 24, 45, and 31% by value. Uh, the average age, the fleet metrics, as I said, we've got one of the youngest fleets on the planet with at an average of three years old. And this is planes that last for 25 years. Um, those planes are, are on lease for 7.7 .7 years, over a billion dollars in assets. The, that 7.7 that .7 years of, of rent to come adds up to be $836 million in future revenue. 
and we've got growth through those future uh, delivery options of over $600 million um, in aircraft. So we are going to continue to grow this company. And so for people who have seen the share price, well, I think it's up a pound in about 20 in the last sort of 20 months or so. They, I often get the question, you know, have I missed out? Well, the simple answer to that question is that every one of those, every year for last year, we've grown at 30%, and we've just advised you that we're growing at 30% again. So the revenue and the earnings will continue to grow, and that'll continue to drive share price. So in summary, we've got a strong set of recent financial results. Uh, the industry is going extremely well, um, using the technology available to it, low fuel price, um, consolidation. We've got great fleet metrics amongst our portfolio of aircraft. We're increasing the number of customers and, and diversification. We know what we're doing because we've been around for 11 years. And prime for growth is probably incorrect. That growth will be delivered into the fleet by the new year. And that will drive share price. And when we're currently trading below book value. The, the typical metric for our industry is that our industry trades at a, a, a slight premium to book value. We're trading at almost a 20% discount. You know, but we are the fastest growing. So our share price also grows the fastest and is always catching up to our earnings. So I'll finish there. Um, my contact details will be on the... Uh, presentation, my email address. I always encourage people, and people who have been to these things before know that I come to London about four times a year because I live in Singapore. Um, I encourage people, if you have any questions and you do become a shareholder, um, I might not be answer the phone at all, all hours, but certainly email me. And we have a great, rep, uh, great reputation with our uh, shareholders, and we've got some very long-term shareholders who have made five times their money in this stock. And we're talking about well-known investors like Mark Slater from Slater Investments. We're talking about Artemis. We're talking about Tom DeBell at M&G. Um, all have made lots of money out of this stock. All have accumulated this stock over the last couple of years. So with that, I'll turn it over to questions. Okay. Uh, we only have a couple of minutes in the break. We're going to wrap up. Richard, before we get into questions, are you going to be around for a drink afterwards? Yeah, I'll be around for about okay. 10 minutes after. OK, so we don't get a chance to ask a question now. Grab Richard quickly after we finish. Um, why doesn't your company have a presence in the Americas? Um, we had a presence in the Americas. Um, we, we, part of our investment criteria just isn't getting a 12% yield on the asset. Um, we are very uh, concerned about the type of aircraft, even the engines on the aircraft, the seating layout, um, obviously the credit of the airline that it's with. But one of the, one of the key criteria is jurisdiction. Um, we are owners of our assets, we own our planes. If there is a problem, we absolutely require the right to go and pick up our plane and to put it somewhere else. Now, in the US, they have Chapter 11 protection, which can restrict your access to your assets. And so, we, and so just as much as delivering a plane into deepest, darkest Africa or Russia, where somebody might point an AK-47 at you when you go to pick it up, we worry a lot about jurisdiction, and all of our business is designed about mitigating the risk associated with it. So to, put, to give you another example, 100% of our debt is at fixed rates. So we have no exposure with our current fleet to rising interest rates. And that's because we take a very conservative approach. Now, obviously, if we were at floating interest rates, we'd be far more profitable because your, your cost of debt would be far lower. But we make enough money. We make $21 million profit after tax on $94 million revenue. So we're quite happy to lower the risk because we know the business is lucrative enough. Are there any South American airlines that uh, you're interested in? Um, you look at some of the big ones, yes, we would consider um, as part of a diversified portfolio. Uh, gentleman here, please. Yeah. Um, you, you show you've got... Uh, orders for ATR, yep. you, the, the company strategy seems to be moving into uh, bigger, narrow body and wider yeah, body. Yeah, certainly 70% jet now. You're not yep. showing any orders for uh, Boeing or Airbus, but there's a six-year delivery time. Yeah, How's that going to work? Yeah, there's three ways you can buy an aircraft. The first way is you can order from the manufacturer and wait six years. And we do that with the ATRs, because we've been doing ATRs for six years, so we, every year we order another four or five. Um, the two other ways you can buy um, aircraft is that you can, when the airlines order them, like at the big air shows, you'll hear 
British Airways and Ryanair order 100 planes. They actually don't pay for them. They do a sale to the lessors and then lease them back for 10 or 12 years. So that's the second way to buy a plane. The third way, which is, and we do all three, is that we can buy off the other big lessors. When I said we have a billion dollars of assets, we're one of the smallest lessors on the planet. The biggest guys on the planet are GE. They have 1,600 planes worth 40 to $50 billion. They sell a plane every week, and they're quite happy to sell us you know, one, two, three, four, five planes. And we can choose what we want. Now, we're actually in a unique position because we're well known, we're credible, we've, got, we've proven our integrity, the airlines like us. You've got to remember that when, if we buy a plane with a lease attached, that airline has to novate its lease to the new owner. So they will like a reputable um, um, lessor to be there. So we can buy aircraft that way as well. And the, the, the big guys actually like to have us there as uh, to provide liquidity and a secondary market for their aircraft. So we actually leverage off what the big guys do. So it's, it's a good opportunity for us moving forward. OK, I've got one, um, one more question, please. Yeah. Uh, gentlemen at the back. I'm being a bit naughty. I uh, actually have two, but I hope uh, they won't um, take long. Hello, Barry. Uh, no, all right, one. But Barry's a shareholder. I'm full disclosure, Barry. Um, okay. <laughs> Why? What happened to your bond issue that yeah. didn't happen? Look, and this is actually this is a very good question because when I said we're trading at a 20% discount to our um, book value, we're trading um, 30p off our high. And that high was about three or four months ago um, when we finished the year with record results and um, announced a successful sale of some aircraft. Um, we typically, as I said, buy an aircraft... Um, and we use bank debt to, and a mortgage to pay for that aircraft. That's what we've been doing for 11 years. Now, we're at a situation now where we can um, look to unsecured debt to um, purchase aircraft. So what we did with the two wide bodies, Barry, which are being delivered in the next couple of weeks, is that we had backup secured debt financing, and that secured debt financing is at 4% or lower. So very very, very low cost of debt historically for our company. So these are going to be very profitable planes. But we'd be willing to, to finance those things on an unsecured basis at a higher cost if that cost isn't too high. So we went to the unsecured market with JP Morgan, did a roadshow, and what they said is that um, they... And we thought that we'd accept the unsecured debt and we'd be willing to pay a premium if it was in the 5% range. So, because remember, if you're going to borrow $200 million at 5% versus 4%, you're costing $2 million a year profit, which the shareholders don't get. But you get lots of balance sheet flexibility and unencumbered assets, probably improve your credit rating. So we, we, we tried that. Um, we went to the markets. They, they didn't give us the price they, that we want. So we, what we did was we were very disciplined. Um, we set our target price. It wasn't achieved. And then we're relying on our traditional forms of debt, which is bank debt. I think... One of the reasons why I came to, to London was because I did hear from five or six shareholders that they, they thought that was actually a negative. What's actually happening is because we are using that cheaper senior secure debt, the company will be more profitable in, two, in 2018 moving forward. And as I've been explaining that to shareholders, you've seen the share price bounce in the last couple of weeks. And so that's the explanation behind that. We'll, t we'll try that again, Barry. And as we, as we improve our credit rating, and you know, the, the high yield debt markets change all the time. So the price you get one week might be different three months later or six months later. And so at a point in time, if we could refinance all of our book, because our average cost of it is 5%, we're seeing double B, plus, uh, double B rated companies raising debt at sub 5%. So we could potentially refinance our whole book with unsecured debt, and that would improve the credit rating even further and lower our cost of debt moving forward. So it's something we're likely to do again, but it shouldn't be seen as a negative. Okay, Richard, thank you very much indeed.